Welcome back to the podcast. I am your host, Mr. Made Over. And I am your wonderful, magnificent, beautiful co host, Mrs. Made Over. All right. We want to thank y'all for tuning in today. Um, <laughs> first of all, I think I want to tackle um, before we go into the topic, you know, um, but. I want to talk about how awesome church was today. Ooh, 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 my eyelashes stayed on. <laughs> I know a lot of times we don't, we don't really we don't talk about. We don't talk about our it. church. No, we're, in fact, we we're we're actually going to start doing that. How about that? That we talk about church. Yeah. And okay. what the message was, we'll actually go in detail and break down, you know, what the message is about, mm-hmm. um, and then um, take it from there. Because if we're getting fed. It's kind of pointless for us to get fed and not feed y'all. I mean, y'all and get we fed. We like to eat. What we giving y'all? I mean, what we get, we give yeah. y'all too. Um, it's so just in different just format. Just different format. But such an awesome time in church from the worship to uh, to mm-hmm. the message to the very end. Not that you know this was just a a particular or peculiar day. It but wasn't. It was. Just, <laughs> it was just. It was just. I think I felt it from the time I woke up though. Nah, I've been feeling it all week, honestly. And uh, I think I, I I was explaining to you, like, with this worship thing, I feel like I'm like, I feel like God is taking me to a, a totally yeah. different place as far as worship and being keen on um, what the atmosphere yeah. is being called for. But use the analogy that you use with me, though. Remember it? Uh, with, uh, I feel like, you know, if everybody can ever visualize Superman when he go up in this in the clouds and he look around, it looks very beautiful. But then he realizes it's nobody up there but him. And he shoot back. Down. And then he shoot back down. <laughs> but that's how I've been feeling lately. I feel like I'm taken into this worship realm, and and, and I'm given such a a crazy playlist of worship. To um, if y'all don't know, I am the minister of music. At World Changes Tabernacle But I'm giving so many different things For Not just for myself But for the atmosphere mm-hmm. I think it's, it's keen to know What is needed For the atmosphere yeah. You can't jump around all the time Sometimes, sometimes I feel like We just want to shout And um, just Sometimes you just gotta listen Jump and, and be entertained For the most part Right and sometimes you got to know what the atmosphere is for today. It was it, it was such such a great time. Mm-hmm. Because I think a lot of people, uh, when they first came back, I think mom said the best. They were treating us like we was live stream for real. Like they were they were in the house, but they still had the mind of yeah. live stream. And there was really no participation. Right. They were just watching. <laughs> so, do, do I clap? Can I say hallelujah? I believe the day was the you know the help that you know the people needed, and, and to God be the glory. What did you get out of it, man? I did the ugly cry. Ugly cried the whole service just about. Yeah, just about. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> I, I I did. I ugly cried from the time. I came from the back, <laughs> then I was good, then I ugly cried again, then I just ugly cried all the way to the end of, yeah. <laughs> to the end of service. But it was good. Like worship was very um it was good. And if you it was one of those experiences where you literally could you would not have uh, you could have gotten it through the live stream, but it was just something being, and I'm gonna call it an intimate setting because it really yeah, was not. Yeah. It was not a lot of people today. That's the perfect. Uh, um, it yeah. was like a very like that was the smallest it's been I know since the girls and I have started coming back. Yeah. I mean, it's not like it's been crowded, yeah. but that was the smallest, and so it was more of a. I think probably count on two hands. Yeah. It was like more Maybe. like family wise. And that's from the back. That's from the whole church. Yeah. Because you know? we had that one whole side that was <clears throat> for the most part it was empty. Yeah. Um, but family wise, it was about ten maybe ten families and that was like one or two people. I think we had the biggest mom and dad had the big like our families were the yeah. biggest as far as how many people. Um but 
I I remember they were uh, free free worship posted on Facebook was saying how good the service was. Um, and, Did she? Yeah. And wow. and so people were trying to know. kind of put words together. And I was just like, there was no words to really describe where it was. But the thing that I enjoyed the most is that it was oh, it was me seeing God use our sister in worship, and then us getting a chance to hear. I'm a cop. Elder Bontavia Anderson. <laughs> She's gonna be so mad. She ain't gonna like that. She's gonna get me. But. I was just like it was so good to be in the house and see God use our sisters in unison yeah. at the same time to be able to like it was kind of like free like lifted bunny higher than what she was expecting to go yeah. um, and so for me it was just I was full like I was so full <laughs> and it it was one of those things where it penetrated down like deep down like deep deep down heart um, yeah and it was kind of weird. I mean it touched on every single aspect I think I've just been trying to really sort out in my mind and not really yeah, you really it seemed like you really let go of some stuff a little bit or yeah or some like it really yeah resonated with you yeah it hit exactly where I needed kind of where I've been just trying to decipher in my mind like okay where am I supposed to be what am I supposed to do but how do I not be afraid because this we are in this this example we are in this example okay God I'm asking you for some things but don't allow everything else around me to make me fearful Mm -hmm. let me help me to cancel out that fear and it's um it, it was just for me it was literally right on time like really really wide on time and then even the song selection um that last song that you saw yeah that one like that would that would just it i was just i was just done um because for people that don't know i mean and we're very transparent there have been many times on this this quarantine where we have hit negative I had to hurry up and transfer over before everything cleared. There's been a couple times where we've had like a few dollars in there, but we've had everything that we needed. Mm -hmm. Lights on, waters on, you know, electric. I mean, the heating and air is working. We got to, you know, the girls are good. Like everything that we need to be able to function. It was like, how dare I not? join in to worship and tell the Lord how good he is Mm -hmm. how dare I not say God you have been merciful because we have not been um, doing as we should be doing we have not been focused enough on you and we've been focused on everything else so it was just so um, impactful and of course when you see other believers you know I, I, I and it Mom, when mom is rejoicing, mom always takes me another level. Yeah. When my <clears throat> sister Amitris is is worshiping and it just take like it's just like it just builds up because these are kindred spirit women and we are now all able to worship in a unison in a small secluded group and we are all on the same accord. With mask on. With ma- yeah, uh, with mask on, <laughs> we did. We, we had mask. We just out there. Yeah. And now I will say no this: mask. bad choice of mask for your wife today, because I couldn't get like it was restricting my face. So like I was getting, I felt myself. I was getting hoarse, and I was trying to catch my breath at the same time. Because y'all, I sing, I, I sing loud, like I'm on a praise team. But if you put me on the stage, I ain't really trying to sing like that with them. I'll just rather hold a key. In the background, which is probably my key that can go up or it can go real low, just depending on where I'm at. So, um, but it was, it was such a great, oh my gosh, it was such a great service. Yeah. Such a, such a great service. And I think we are going to start touching base on the message that we are, have been given. Yeah. You know, um, 2021, look forward to some, matter of fact, before, 
I don't want to do that. Yeah, you know, in no. 2021, we're gonna start. We're, we're gonna start we're doing gonna a lot of stuff before 2020. I should do that first. That was um, cute. <laughs> so, what? so we're gonna have to. We're gonna begin to show. You know what we got from the message, and you know, hopefully, I like, they can help y'all with this walk and you know whatever you're going through. Because I know it helps us uh, big time. Um, but. For today's topic, I was thinking like, man, it's getting close to the to, to the Christmas season. Jeez. And I said, man, what should I do? My wife said, can't be a long podcast. So I said, let me think of something else then. That is not how that went. Let me run this. Can we at least tell the truth? Okay. My wife gets tired. And then when she got to get up in the morning, <laughs> she, she's a little grumpy. So um, we're going to do this. Yeah. But the question is this. We're going to do one question. And it's going to be fire. Buckle up. This is going to be great. And the question is, I got stronger when I let go of blank. I got stronger when I let go of blank. Blank. What is something that you let go of that made you stronger and really want to do this walk with God? That made me stronger. It made me strong. That's not. That's not. Uh, that's you know, sister. That's it. No, that's not the song I was thinking of. But okay. <laughs> what <laughs> sound like that? There's a song I'm thinking of in my head, and it just didn't come out right. In my bad. <laughs> Sorry. Um, what is one thing that I got rid of that made me stronger? Yeah. I'm gonna say dead weight. Break this down now, like, come on. You're a teacher. How would you want to? Because I'm thinking if that's, like, my final thing, though. That made me want to, like, do this walk for real, for real. Yeah, I have to say dead weight. Dead weight. um, Jesus. Dead weight from life. Um... But mainly, really, like dead weight with the relationships that I that I was mm. keeping and entertaining and right. indulging in, like it was literally dead weight. Um, and some aspects of how I was living in that time, um. I'm not going to say I lost who I was, but I was starting to, I was holding, well, I, I was holding on or building upon the, the dead weight of relationships past. And so it was kind of like baking a cake. Okay. First bad relationship. All right. That's your ingredients for your, your cake mix. Mm-hmm. The next one now I got the cake actually baked right so that well that was cake then you know you got to layer it and you got the icing and all so like I look at it like that of the different relationships it was like making a cake and so when I finally got to the top where the icing was on it <laughs> you know how they say the icing on the cake then that last thing was like my Okay, I got to do something different because this right here is not working and it's not healthy. It became an unhealthy thing um, that was driving me to become a person that I did not want to become. And so the dead weight of holding on to, I got to be like this for this person. I got to do this. I got to 
put on this persona. I I need to lose weight because this one don't want me to be heavy. I got to wear my hair like this one because this one don't want me to be natural. This one want me to wear full face makeup. Like I look 16 all the time. 18 on a good day. My kids will tell you I'm 20. But like because I have always looked very youthful, I'll say, growing up, that has been one of the things that I struggle with because no matter what I do makeup wise, I still look very youthful. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I mean, it depends on who. I mean, for me, that's a good thing. But for when I was in the relationships or comparing myself to others, it was like, man, I don't look grown. Like people say, you don't look that, you know, I mean, you know, when I had Raya, they thought that Raya was my sister. Like I ain't look, you know, the guy was like, well, you ate, I don't ever forget, Wonder Win Dixie. He was like, you old enough to have a baby? You look like you're like 16. Where's your mama? Where's my mama? That's my child. What are you talking about, sir? I would have said thank you. Yeah, I just looked at him. No, sir, I'm old enough to have a kid. Yeah, no, I'm older than 16. Thank you, though, sir. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But no, I mean, so that's just always been something well, so that. Put your number right here, then. All right. <laughs> <laughs> See, I can't even with him. Find out your legal. I, I, I can't. Right no, here, no. <laughs> but I would say that was just all of the things and all of the baggage that I was holding on to turn me to want to do something different when it became a time where it was um, almost detrimental. Mm. So that's what that would be that one thing that I I had to get rid of. It was, you know, how you say, you know, when um, what did I say? When you, what's the, the saying? When you tired of being sick and tired, you sick and yeah. tired of being sick and tired. Yeah, I got to th- like I was tired and I was sick of being tired. But then I needed to figure out what do I do to be able to leave the situation and still maintain who I was like my integrity um, and also m- be safe while doing it. Right. Um, but that's the one thing that I can tell you that for me relationships and this was like, you know, significant other relationships, boyfriend, girl, cause I ain't one no significant other. boyfriend, girlfriends type stuff, but also relationships with like my parents the the wanting and needing to satisfy exactly what they wanted me to do and so when I learned to when I was ready to let that go and ready to be able to be myself and make the decisions and the choices um that were going to benefit me then that was what I realized I had to let go of people pleasing Mm. so that 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 baggage of the people pleasing in the relation in whatever capacity of a relationship I was in at that time. Gotcha. <clears throat> Guess it's my turn. Huh? Oh gosh. Mm. Um. Sips tea. I got stronger when I let go of my own control. Um. I don't like it was yesterday. We were staying with um <clears throat> we were staying with um your friend and uh got some diced pineapples, vodka in there. Oh my god. And I remember I remember it clear as day, intoxicated, high. And I hated God that day. Truly hated him. Because I felt like he wasn't doing his part. Now, a lot of people won't be real and say, you know, yeah, it was a point in time where I hated God. And I just remember just going off on him, like, or call myself going off on him. (laughs) You know, (laughs) like... Cussing everything. What? Saying things. You cuss God? How yeah. dare you do that? But 
saying things like what a person who is emotional, broken, and who's been taken away from everything that he's known, everything that he's loved, his whole life flipped and turned upside down. And every day trying to find steady ground. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I was losing in so many different ways. But ultimately, hindsight, I was gaining. And I remember, I tell the story all the time. Like, I remember asking God, I, I remember telling God that if you want me to serve you, you're going to have to show me something. Because if you don't show me, if you don't show me something, this will be the last day I ever decide to turn to you. So you gave God an ultimatum. So called. So called. <laughs> Thank you. <were. laughs> um. So I remember going to the, to the store. She was sick. Very sick. What was wrong with me? I don't know. Just sick. Um. Where to go get some um, things. When I came here, I didn't have much money. Did you even have money at all? I had a little, I had a little, little ducket here and there. You know. Sorry. Um, remember going to the store. Ten dollars in my hand. Trying to be a, a, a good boyfriend. And get my uh, my girlfriend something that she need to make her feel good i heard orange juice make you feel bad you feel good you know orange juice costs five dollars then you know but um so i said i'm gonna get her some orange juice then get her some some other stuff trying to be a good boy for my last ten dollars and uh i remember literally adding things up on my phone and I'm like, man, I hope the taxes don't come up on this because I'm about to put something back. And I remember standing in line and um ready to go. This lady, she had like a, she already had like two carts. You know, so she's just boop, 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 boop. Checking out, checking out, checking out. And I'm just sitting there like uh, you know, in my mind I gotta get back to, you know, my my girl. Cause you know, she wasn't feeling good. Long story short, um, she basically, you know how the uh, cash register say, cashier say, is this yours too? And she looked at me and she said, I'm going to pay for his too. So I remember her paying for everything. And for a lot of people, that may not mean nothing, but for me, you got to think about it. I had just... So called gave God an ultimatum. About to be down to my very last. And for me, it doesn't take that much to convince me as far as to follow. That's why I was probably into a lot of stuff that I was into. Mm -hmm. And I'm loyal to whatever I'm into. Mm -hmm. And I just remember this lady paying for everything. And she looked at me and she said, I said, thank you, because, you know, first of all, I hadn't been here that long. So, you know, that, that, that that's another thing. So, and I said, thank you. And she was like, nah. She said, when God do for you, you do for others. And she walked off. And from that moment, I said to myself, I went back to the house. And I immediately began to break down. And I remember God saying to me, with the Holy Ghost saying to me, okay, now we can talk. <laughs> and it's like in that moment of frustration and anger and rage, it's like I gave God everything, whether it was good, bad, or ugly mm. I came to him in the most ugliest form and I just remember as I was saying this thing hindsight looking back now I just remember 
me getting lighter and releasing because these are things that like I held on the inside, mm -hmm. but I never let out stuff about my dad, stuff about my grandma, like people who pass in my life. I just let it out because that was like that wasn't you had just moved. Yeah, it hadn't happened like not too long ago mm -hmm. type of situation. And I remember bearing all. And this this is when I realized that God doesn't want you perfect. He wants you broken mm -hmm. and he wants you to bring all of your hurt, all mm -hmm. of your pain, all of your confusion, everything to him. And he says, give me control. Right. So when I relinquish my control. Being the smallest thing as a lady paying for stuff. Ever since then, the Lord has been providing in such a major way. Once I let go of my control, not, you know, trying to always dictate mm -hmm. and control things. That's why my faith, people say is dumb faith or, 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 or crazy faith. But for me, it's, it's all I know now mm -hmm. because I took my hands off. So my wife was like, okay, what are we supposed to do? Hold up. Let me, <laughs> let me check. If I have no answer, I won't get, I, I'm not right. going to strum up an answer. That's one thing about me. You will never hear me say anything that the Holy Ghost has not given to me. Right. But when I relinquish control. And that was a tough time. That's when I got stronger. That was a tough time because we were, one, we were living with somebody else. Yeah. Um, and it was already kind of like a tense <laughs> yeah. situation here and here and there. Yeah. Um, because even when you're when you are friends and you're living with someone and then you throw in a boyfriend or a girlfriend, yeah. dynamics start to shift the atmosphere. Like and I, so, I think at first it sounds good. Yeah. If, yeah. It sounds real good. <laughs> in the beginning. Oh, don't worry about it, girl. I got you. We got it. We good. Um, and so that was now. Did we have? Did we had a car then, or? We have no car. No. Yet. Okay. So yeah. So we were solely. So then this was the beginning. Yeah, beginning. That's what I say. Okay. Like so that. this was the beginning. Beginning. So that would have been like January, February, some somewhere around there, because that was when you just had just moved mm -hmm. um, here, and so we did not have a vehicle. So we were transportation. We were depending on somebody else, and so that means you walk to the store. Um, and so yeah. those, those were like, so I want to paint the picture of saying like, it wasn't like you had $10 and then we had, no, we were like literally scraping. I think I had just started working in October. So it was, um, and that was October after being out of work since that would have been October 2012 when I started yeah. working and I had been out of work since February of 2012 and then you moved officially moved here December 31st December 29th 30th mm -hmm. but by December 31st you were here so um, it was one of those situations to where we were not in a good place I mean you know financially as a, 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 a brand new couple I'll say um, We did not have Things of our own <laughs> So Any little bit We could get from people Or any assistance Was yeah. good um, But you know From me going To take care of me But now I'm having To make sure he's good Because I knew There was no work He was coming with no money um, It was just a lot Of different factors <laughs> And we talked about The relinquish Him relinquishing Control Him being here and leaving everything behind and, and that was that um, within itself was tough yeah and so that was not only tough, tough it was tough for many different reasons though because you relinquished control and you came here but then everything was home so like i my comfort was i kind of knew this area a little bit but then my mom didn't live kind of far away so and then I was with a friend who was you know a childhood friend so those were some of the things that were kind of going for me but then to bring him into the equation that had one it was tension on our relationship because he would always say you know you you have stuff here you you can go home to your mama 
I I can't. Shh. Like my mom, I gotta you know scrape up the money because in the beginning, because I I was fun, I was basically funding the trips, and so, um, like that's how that worked. So it wasn't a, um, and this was where I would kind of I'll kind of tie in my part too, but this is where I had to, um, kind of not let kind of focus on how we were connected and how we always had a way of being connected um, and how that always came about. And so um, because no matter how long we talked, we would pick up like we hadn't even missed a beat. (laughs) And so that was one of the things that I can say about this one relationship where um, through that process of me trying to rid myself of that dead weight and trying to get out of a situation that was really holding me back from a lot of things and, and really, um, breaking me down on the inside. Uh, I knew something had to happen. I just didn't know what that thing was. Um, and then that's where honey here turned me into, um, not turned me into, but turned me to put my eye on God, yeah, like yeah. focusing. And I started doing those things and start praying and, um, Asking God, like, well, telling him, okay, look, God, all right. So you, I'm out here, and I've been out here for four years, and now what's coming out. So the thing of it was, it's just, I kind of, I think in my own way, too, I was like, okay, God, like, I've been out here, and this is what I, what I thought that you was telling me I needed to do. Um, And then it became, well, okay. Look, I'll leave if I'll leave if this is set up. I'll leave if. <laughs> um, and then it became where I finally realized God had been saying the whole time to me. I gave you. I mean, it, it kind of it came out like this. You're leaving like this, but I had given you opportunities to leave and you just didn't leave. So now I got to force you out. And then this force out now is. <laughs> Not going to be. I was that force out. The, <coughs> I would say more of a. <laughs> hey. Expected time. Like I think a lot of times. The thing that we feel like. Is a force out. It, it is more of a. A way out. Yeah. I mean. Well and, what I mean by. But what I mean by force out is because. <sighs> there were many opportunities for me to. Come back. I'll say come back home. Many opportunities, several opportunities. It wasn't like, I mean, I was coming home almost <laughs> every couple of months. If that, like, that's the kind of money I was shelling out on, on a plane. T- I found a, a cheap plane ticket. Okay. I'm coming home. Um, but I say force out because when I was, when I would come home or come back home, I would realize that I was happier back home and dread going back. To what I deem my new home, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. So I say force out because I I wasn't leaving on my own accord. I mean, he had basically shown me, okay, you know, you can stay. All right, three, four months. All right, you can stay. But I just felt like, no, I can't because this this will work. This has to work out. I have invested too much. Like, that's how I was processing it. And so I say force out because my back was literally against the wall and I had no other way to go but out. It was kind of like my back against the wall, right? I can't go this way. I can't go this way. The only door I see is peripheral that way. So I need to be exiting that way. Because if I stay here and that door closes on that opportunity, then who knows what would happen. Well, I mean, God knows what he's doing. Right. <laughs> and um, we want to thank y'all for tuning in. And uh, um, um, But I want you to think about that question and put it in play of what are you holding on to that can catapult you to a, a, right. a, a whole new beginning? Because what I thought was treasure to me mm-hmm. treated me like trash. Right. And what I thought was my life and what I thought like like this is it. Right. 
didn't respect me enough to even know when I was out there dying. Right. And people always say, why, why, why did you leave, you know, where mm-hmm. you were from? Mm-hmm. And I will always tell people because I was walking around dying and nobody right. wanted to do nothing. Only thing they wanted was me to do this, do that, mm-hmm. and do that. So watch out for them leeches. But yeah. I tell you now, if you're holding on to some things, it's only going to be a matter of time before it either takes you out. Right. Or destroy you. Mm-hmm. And set you up for the craziest failure. Right. And And you, once you let go, I guarantee you become much, much stronger. Yeah. And that's the thing is we have to stop wanting to have the control in order to be able to let it go. So I had already um, finally relinquished up my control. So for me, it was, okay, I'm listening and I'm looking for, I was seeking someone to give me the answers to help me to get over this thing. Um, And then when I was able to come to myself and say, self, all you're doing is people pleasing. So at what point are you going to stop this? Let it go to be able to excel in the different things that you need to be able to excel into. So um just be okay with knowing that you have the baggage be okay yeah. that the baggage is there you just got to learn how to unpack it all yeah. you got to unpack it <laughs> you might have to fold the clothes up again and but don't put that stuff away fold it up all right so this is what that is all right let me shake that out look at that all right i don't need that put that to the side all right let me see this one okay that might be a good trait i need to have let me keep that so when you're unpacking your baggage even if it was good or bad, you still need to be able to examine it to to know and to understand what is it that God has in your life that needs to stay. And then what is it that needs to go? But then um, as Mr. Medover said here is you need to make sure that sounded so like professional. As my husband said, <laughs> um, you need to, to be able to. And be be able to and be okay with relinquishing your control because you're going to have to do it at some point or another. Oh, yeah. uh, it, it may be in a way you want to do it or it may be in a way you don't want to do it. So don't be caught. I'm going to say don't be caught slipping. You can do it the easy way. Yeah. Or you can, or do, you it can the do it the hard way. way. So don't be don't don't get caught up in what everybody else is doing. Find out what it is that God wants you to do, what he is asking you um, to do so that he can actually help you be stronger in him. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing that I really want people to understand is it, this was not something that we did for ourselves, but this was something that we did so that we could become um that we could begin our walk for real, for real. Yeah. Um, and not just the, you know, we were, yeah, we were baptized when we were younger and we, we you know, we confess Christ is our Lord and Savior. No, we were trying to figure out how to get on the walk for real, for real. So if you're struggling with trying to get on that walk for real, then your prayer needs to line up with, okay, God, you need to strip me of everything that I have that is not like you. And then start showing. That was another prayer. Lord, show me me. And it was ugly. (laughs) And I still have to do it sometimes because there's still some things inside that I know that I need to be able to let go uh, or not be able to, but to let it go. Um, But it's all about being strong in him, being strong for him, because if we are tattered and shattered, there's no way that we can help others come to Christ. So. Thanks for tuning in. As we always say, keep, keep God, God first, first and, the, and rest the rest will be added. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching and listening. Listening. Until next time, we bid you adieu. Yeah. Peace out.